This is a little bit of a bonus episode for you guys. We are obviously in the middle of football season, so it is hard to talk about anything other than football right now at BuckeyeHuddle.com and all the other places around the internet. But I did want to give you a little bit of a taste of another one of the programs on campus with quite a championship pedigree of its own. That is the women's hockey program. Got a chance to talk this week to Ohio State women's hockey head coach Nadine Muzzerall. She has done an incredible job with that program. If you look at the most established, the most impressive coaches on the Ohio State campus, I'm sure everyone's going to say Ryan Day's name right immediately, and that's absolutely fair, or Ty Tucker on the men's pro tennis program. You don't have to go very far down the list to get to Nadine Muzzerall. And frankly, she might be higher on the list than at least one or two of those guys as well. She has won two of the last three national championships at Ohio State, and she did it in a program that was really kind of at the bottom when she took it over just a few years back. So get a chance to hear from her. She had a lot of interesting things to say this week when we got a chance to talk to her. So let's start with this one, Buckeyes. The defending national champions, they beat Wisconsin one nothing in the national championship game last year. And she called last year's team the most talented team she has had since getting to Ohio State. So how does this year's team that's about to start its season stack up? That was a phenomenal team that we had, but I look at it as um, we've just reloaded, you know. Um, uh, we don't have as much quantity on the team. Our bench is smaller, but the quality is still very good. You know, we were just putting together our power play, and uh, we had hard times deciding who should be where because there is a lot of offensive talent. It's going to require some coaching because we've got a couple transfers, and their style of how they played is very different from our style, being very aggressive and relentless. Um, and then we've been after them in their fitness because I think other programs train very differently, differently than we do here at Ohio State. When she talks about reloading the roster and bringing in talent to replace all the talented players who've left, what are they looking for when they're reloading that talent on the roster? So three things we look for, I, I'd say, when we're out recruiting. Uh, your skating ability, your IQ, and your relentless personality. I, I will make that prettier and uh, better for the media of what it, than I normally say. <laughs> um, but you have to have two of those three, but one of those two has to be that relentless pursuit. Uh, because we're not going to coach you up from a five to a 10 every day. I'll coach you down from a 10 to a seven, but we're not going to, you got to be ready to go. You know, um, it's very sexy to want to come here to Ohio State. You know, it's uh, bedazzling. The brand speaks for itself and winning national championships and having jewelry is something that kids want to be a part of. But when you get on the inside, it's hard as hell. So they're starting to understand that. Not nervous or, or backing off from it, but they're starting to feel what it takes to win. The Buckeyes have won two of the last three national championships. They beat Minnesota Duluth three years ago. Two years ago, they lost one nothing to Wisconsin in the national championship game. And then this past year, they beat Wisconsin one nothing in the national championship game. So how different is it to start the season coming off of a national championship as opposed to last year when they were coming off a season when they came up just short. It's funny, I had Tom Ryan, the wrestling coach, think, oh, you're so close to a three-peat. So thanks, Tom. But, um, and then you had to bring it up again. But um, it actually, you know, of course it motivates you. Um, actually, funny story. Um, so in 22, we won the gold. 23, we won the silver. First practice, I had the silver trophy at the center ice to remind them, do you like this color? So, and we skated some laps around it and I put it up in the locker room all year so they'd have to continuously stare at what silver looked like. Um, and then last year, of course, we won the gold, but I always think of when you're number one, yes, you have the target on your back. I always thought of it as like a na in NASCAR, the lead um, rider, everyone is, drafting off of you so it's a lot harder to stay in the front right and that's how I feel sometimes is that we're in this NASCAR race and we're the lead driver people continue to pursue us and we got to keep up mentioned a minute ago two national titles and then of course a runner-up finish in a one nothing loss two years ago so two national titles and a runner-up in the last three years what has been the key to not only getting the Ohio State women's hockey program to the mountaintop but staying there 
Yeah, I think it's how we train the athletes. Like, we're not afraid to train them hard, you know, with the resources we have thanks to our football program. Um, we know how hard we can push them without breaking them, and they don't even realize how hard they can go. And we always say, you know, a Navy SEAL saying is your body can endure more pain and can go farther than you know that it can. It's your mind that quits. And so we're really big on pushing them and raising the bar every day because they also say the only easy day was yesterday. And so that's how we have that philosophy and mindset in our locker room is that we will push you more than anybody else can. Because when I started this program, we were 500 for 18 years. And the one thing that helped me bring this team to where we are today was that relentless FU mentality of we're gonna keep going after you. But just because we start to bring in talent, I don't wanna lose who we were, that blue collar team, because we have talent. If we have both, you know, now we become very dangerous. So I think that sets us aside for most people. When Nadine Muzzerol took over the Ohio State women's hockey program back in 2016, Let's be honest, the program was a little bit of a mess. They were coming off of a season where they had a head coach who had lasted just one season, gone 10, 25, and 1, and just 6, 21, and 1 in WCHA league play. So not exactly born on third base, not exactly a born on third base situation for Nadine Mazzarol. So when she took the approach that she did to building the program, what was the impetus behind that? What, what was the why behind her approach to building the program the way that she has? Yeah, you know, uh, I took the first year to watch and observe because I came from another Big Ten school that was very successful, both as a player and uh, I coached them for five years. And when I was there, we had an undefeated season and we won four in five years. And so um, I just watched and it was very, um, very quickly, early, I found some of the weaknesses within the program of accountability. And I was raised by a single mom didn't have a license, used to go to hockey on the back of her bicycle, on the back seat of her bicycle. We didn't have a car. So I was blue collar, had the Rocky my, mentality. And I knew every kid could possess that, but did they want to possess it? And I, I was after them hard early, to be honest with you. And I set a tone early. And um, we had to weed out some weak, and the strong survived, I guess. You never really know how things are going until you really know. Kind of a weird way to say it, but. You never know until you know. And when did Nadine Muzzerol kind of really get the sense that her approach to building the program and her mentality around the program really was sort of sticking and really was working? With to be honest, after that year, I worked throughout the first year with an active Navy SEAL in the Focus 3 group that we had, and we created our culture blueprint. And then I, at the end of the year, I showed it to our captains, and I remodeled our um coaches uh, landscape of what that looked like because I don't know if you guys are aware but I got hired <clears throat> excuse me hired end of August and I met the team for the first time on the road at the first game and so I was drinking out of a fire hydrant I had an eight-month-old and a two-year-old so um, but to your point I, um, I removed alcohol from the season and because what I noticed was everybody liked to tailgate and party and I just simply said you're not good enough to do both you're not being rewarded on the ice and so the, I would say, defining moment was actually my 40th birthday, October 19th, when five kids broke that rule, and the rest of the team held them accountable and was making them run stairs in the morning. And I got a call from the athletic trainer. Why is your team running stairs? I said, they're not running stairs. It was my captains holding them accountable, and the entire team woke up at 5.30 in the morning to make sure those five did that because... They wanted to buy into what I was trying to teach them. And that's when I knew the culture was starting to shape was because I didn't have to do it anymore. I didn't have to enforce the rules. The team did. And then that year, in my second year, we went to the Frozen Four. There has been a lot of talk about the possibility of giving the Ohio State women's hockey team a new home rink. Right now, they play in the old Ohio State ice rink right next door to St. John Arena. If you ever played intramural hockey or intramural broomball at Ohio State, congratulations. You shared the ice with a two-time national championship women's ice hockey team. Not exactly the kind of home fitting for a national championship, multiple national championship winning program. So what would it mean if the women do finally get a new rink at some point? Um, I think it also, well, it would <laughs> it'd make recruiting a little easier, I think. Uh, our recruiting's fine, but I just think it shows um, our support in our game 
in the city of Columbus and at Ohio State. I think it could really grow hockey immensely in the state of Ohio. I don't know how many here are actually hockey fans, but I have two small children and there's a lot of kids that are playing hockey. So the demand is high, but the supply is very low. And you can make money, $350 an hour, on renting out ice. So I think it could be profitable for our program as well, or for the institution. So I think it's just something that's earned and deserved to show that the institution is supporting our athletic, um, our hockey program, um, but also to grow hockey here in Columbus that we know we have with our Blue Jackets and our men's program here. The success that Nadine Musrol has had with the Ohio State women's hockey program since arriving has opened up some new doors for them. This year, they get the opportunity to play at Wrigley Field as part of the Big Ten's Frozen Confine Series. The Ohio State men's hockey program plays there Friday, January 3rd against Michigan. And then the women, they get to play Wisconsin, the two teams that have won the last three national championships, alternating those last two couple of years. Ohio State versus Wisconsin on January 4th at Wrigley Field. What does it mean for Nadine Muzzerall, who played women's hockey at Minnesota and who has seen the Ohio State program rise from where it was at the very bottom of the program, bottom of the heap to the top of the heap? What does it mean to now have the opportunity to play on that kind of a stage? I mean, Chicago is another hot spot for hockey with the Blackhawks. Um, my associate head coach, James Wisniewski, played 14 years, and he was drafted by the Blackhawks. So he actually played in 2004 in that outdoor game. So he's excited to go back now as a coach and play. Um, but again, I think it's just the experience for the athletes to be able to perform on such a prestigious landmark in athletics as Wrigley Field. Um, it's going to be cold as well so I'm looking to find something good to wear Um, but you know again um, I think it says a lot when they had the opportunity to host a women's hockey team hockey game and they only invited two teams and the fact that we were one of those two when I look back like eight years ago of where we were I don't think we ever would have been considered so it's just all surreal to see the transformation I mean it, some some of it's my hard work but it's a lot of the athletes that bought in and stuck around and and embraced the suck embraced the productive discomfort to get to where they are today and now they're a unified front and I'm very proud of them to have that ability and to take you know women's hockey to Chicago which is a very fun city and showcase what women Um, are able to do in the game of hockey. And in that answer, you did hear her mention James Wisniewski, the former Blue Jacket and longtime NHLer, who is now an assistant coach for the women's team. What did he bring to the the program that made made Nadine Buzzerall decide to change his role from a volunteer assistant for the last couple of years to now being the Buckeyes' associate head coach? So I don't know if a lot of people actually know James Wisniewski and how he played the game. He was very tough and physical, kind of like how we play. Um, his IQ, though, was off the charts compared to a lot of defense. And um, I just think that he brings that. You know, you're replacing Peter Elander, who had a very impressive background. And I think with James and his love for the state of Ohio, playing for the Blue Jackets for a few years, um, his family loves Ohio. So I think that James brings in a lot lot of um, physicality and IQ and the, a defensive um, shaping our defensive in a different way that we're going to try actually this year that I'm excited for. Um, if it doesn't work, it's James's fault. It was his idea. Um, but I think that he brings in, you know, um, a wealth of hockey knowledge that I'm excited to learn from as well as Klein, my assistant and our players. The women's hockey team will open its 2024-2025 season this Saturday at the OSU Ice Rink, Saturday at 3 o'clock p.m. I can see you in your head doing math right now. Yes, that is probably during the fourth quarter or so of the Ohio State Marshall football game. So not sure exactly what the ticket situation is going to be over there. But if you do walk out of that Marshall game a little bit early, maybe you want to head across Woody Hayes, Woody Hayes Drive over to the OSU Ice Rink to watch the OSU women take on Minnesota Duluth 3 o'clock on Saturday, then again, one o'clock on Sunday. That is, and again, an incredible program, one that more Buckeye fans should probably be paying closer attention to, one that we will probably be paying closer attention to once it gets to be a little less football season around Columbus, Ohio, but definitely do go check them out. And of course, you can find their schedule and all that good stuff at OhioStateBuckeyes.com.
You can find all of our great stuff at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That's where Tony, Kevin, and I cover the football team. Mark covers recruiting. Got our whole team of X's and O's gurus there to make you a smarter football fan all season long. And of course, a little men's basketball, a little women's basketball, a little men's hockey, a little women's hockey, baseball, softball, you name it. We'll probably be there at some point this year. We hope to see you there. See you there at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Right now we're running, running a flash sale, just $4.99 for your first month. You heard us talk about BuckeyeHuddle.com. Talk, heard talk about that fun community that we have on the Huddle Board presented by Jeff Ruby's Columbus. You want to be a part of it? Well, this is a great time to check it out for yourself. Again, just $5 for that first month. Sign up, get access to our whole team of insiders, all the great insider information, fun community, and much, much more all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We hope to see you there. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.